So now we've written the power series of a couple different functions, but they're all obtained in a very similar way. I have to be able to manipulate my function and turn it into one over one minus something, right? That's what I always do. I try to turn it into one over one minus something. But not all functions are like that, right? I can think of many functions that aren't like that. Natural log is not a function that I can write like that. Or tangent, sine, cosine. There are tons of functions that I can't make look just like that. And I said we want to be able to write the power series representation of any function we want. So we're going to need a new technique in order to do that. What I'm doing right now won't work in general, so we've got to do something different. So what I'm going to talk about now is called differentiation and integration of power series. So let's say I have a power series representation of some function. So in general, my power series are centered at A. And all the examples we've done so far today, A has been 0. So it's just x to a power. And let's think for a second. On the left hand side, I have a function. And on the right hand side, I have a power series. Well, functions are very nice. We've studied them, you've studied them for quite some time. In particular, in Cal 1, you learn how to take derivatives of functions and integrals of functions. So that's something we can do on the left hand side. I can take a derivative, I can take an integral. So that asks, makes us wonder what happens to the right hand side when I take a derivative or when I integrate. So I'm going to tell you what happens right now. There's this theorem in your book. So you need, there's some conditions, so I got to write this part down. If the power series Bless you. Cn x minus a to the n. Has, I'm going to abbreviate radius of convergence, r bigger than 0. So you cannot have a 0 radius of convergence if you're going to use this. As long as it has a positive radius of convergence. And uh, this function f of x is going to be equal to this power series. And I'm going to write out some of the terms because it'll help us see this next part. So we have c0 plus c1. f of x is differentiable on your integral of convergence, which is a minus r, a plus r. And so here's the two most important parts of this statement. It tells you how to handle derivatives and integrals. So f prime of x, if I want to take the derivative of f of x, I just have to take the derivative of all of these polynomial pieces. So you just have to take the derivative of each one of these. The derivative of a constant is 0. This one I'm going to get c1 for the derivative. I'll do the power rule. So you just have to take the derivative of each term for the power series. So you're getting c1 plus 2c2 x minus a plus 3c3 x minus a squared, and so forth. So 
So if I write this in the summation notation, what you're doing is you're doing the power rule. So it'll be n cn x minus a to the n minus one. And now my sum is gonna start off at one to infinity. So you might wonder, why does this start off at one? where previously my sum started off at zero, and that's because when you take the derivative of a constant, you get zero. So you're losing a term. And so my sum can start at one instead of zero. So that's how you take a derivative. And then the second part is gonna tell us how we take an integral. So part two, if I wanna integrate f of x, Well, every time you take an indefinite integral, you always get the plus C. We don't want to forget that. So I'm going to put that at the beginning. I'm going to write C plus. And then you just need to integrate term by term, just like we did derivative term by term. So when I integrate C0, you're going to get C0, X minus A, plus C1 x minus a squared over 2 plus c3 x minus a or sorry c2 c2 x minus a cubed over 3 so forth so if i write this with a summation notation it would be c plus the sum n equals 0 to infinity cn x minus a you add one to the power when you integrate a polynomial and divide by that number and i want to mention because we've been talking a lot about radius of convergence and integral of convergence the radius of convergence of the power series in one and two are both r so this process of uh, taking derivatives and integrals, it doesn't change your radius of convergence.